today because I want to be able to give my daughter the command and have them follow through with that command without me having to tell them a second command or tell them to stay, stay, stay. In other words, if I tell my daughter to go to pray, I expect them to stay in the pray until I tell them to free. This is why we have a free command. If I tell my daughter to go to the crate, then I expect them to go stay in the crate until I tell them to come. Or until I tell them to free. I think free and come is probably the only thing that I use for the crate. If you tell your dog to stay in the truck, or to, you know, the auto, or whatever it is, you shouldn't have to keep telling the dog to stay, stay, stay. What happens with stay is, let's say somebody puts their dog in a sit, and the dog gets up. Well, then they tell the dog to stay, and then the dog gets up again, they tell the dog to stay, and the dog gets up again, they tell the dog to stay. So they're really not reinforcing the sit. The sit is what they need to be reinforcing, not necessarily the stay. Does that make sense? I think stay is a lot of times for us people because we feel that the animals can have more success if we tell the dog to stay than if we just tell the dog to sit. But with me, I want the dog to always follow through. This is why free is so important in my kind of training than maybe other people's kind of training. Make sense? Okay. So, I need a volunteer. I can't use you to this, I'm sorry. Um, can I use you? Oh, why not? All right. Well, the reason, okay. Awesome. So there's a reason why I'm going to use this young dog. Sorry. So, the, the reason why I'm going to use him is because the dog doesn't have a ton of energy and he's going to show us more of the picture I want to show you than if I took the Doberman, which is going to have difficulty in this. So in teaching the dog the stationary command or the stay command, I always teach, I always use the command that the dog is strongest in. In other words, if the dog is strongest in a down, then we want to teach this concept in it starting a down. If the dog is strongest in a sit, then we use the then we start this concept in a sit. Okay? I think this dog is naturally going to be strong in a sit, so we're going to start there. What we have to do is we have to teach the dog not to not to monitor our body language. Most likely, if most of you guys put your dog in a sit, Andrew's going to be my dog. Sorry, Andrew. Okay. Andrea knows if I'm sitting here and Andrea's sitting in front of me and I have food and I see Andrea, the dog's going to stay there, right? But what happens if I move away? Andrea says, where's the food going? I want to go to the food. So therefore the dog doesn't stay, right? This is, what, this is naturally. If Andrea had 100 bucks in her hand, I would follow her too. We have to teach the dog that even though our body's going to move, they're still going to get a reward. So instead of rewarding them for following us, we're going to reward them for, for staying in that position. That makes sense? So, we don't want to put our dog in a failing situation. A failing situation would be this. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to stay. Sit. No, sit! 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 No, 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 stop! Okay. What's a failing, what's a failing situation? I went too far back, and I went too quick, okay? However, let's say I can come back and I'm going to teach this. All right, Andrew. I'm going to stay, but I'm going to do this very slowly, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one foot. If I can move one foot, I'm going to give you this big reward. I'm telling Andrew this because this is what I'd be telling my dog to do. So what I would do is, actually, we're going to reverse it. I'm going to be Andrew's dog and sitting. And Andrew's going to meet me. Okay, so Andrew's going to take one slow step. Now, if you notice, her hands didn't move a whole lot. Okay? Just back just a little bit. Let's say I stay there. Andrew steps forward. And then, is Andrew going to give me one little morsel? No, Andrew's going to give me a big morsel. Because I stayed there, and I didn't follow her. Now, you guys are thinking, wait a minute, it's only one step, though. But in the dog's mind... It's a huge step, okay? What most people do, it's kind of funny. You tell them to take one step, and watch what they do. For, for some reason, in our brains, one step means two steps back. I actually only want you to take one step back. Okay? Let's say you can't even get one foot. There's two things that can happen. 
One, you can elongate your sit. Okay, so I'm, so I'm sitting in front of Andrea. As Andrea moves back, I'll let her do it. Are you going to say it? Yes, I Sit. So she elongates to sit while her foot is moving back. This kind of reminds the dog, hey, stay in a sit while I'm moving my foot. So then the dog has a conflict in his head. Wait a minute. You're telling me to sit while you're moving. Okay, I get rewarded for sitting, so I'm going to stay in the sit while you move your foot. Okay, does that make sense? The other thing Andrea can do is she can keep her hand right in front of my nose while she takes a step back. You notice her hand comes forward while her leg went back? Or she's still feeding as the feet are moving. Okay, you guys ready to see a demo? Yes. All right, you ready to do this, young man? Um, yeah, sure. All right, let's see. Okay, so break, break out some food. Have it in your hand. Okay. And stand directly in front of Pongo if you could. So take a slow step back and say, sit. And then step forward. Feet. Excellent. Feet him a couple times. And free. So this young man did very good. He actually did something that I didn't even tell you to do, which was really smart. You notice he took the food out of the picture when he took a step back? That was smart thinking. Because he knew Pong would probably follow his hand. So he just basically took his hand completely out of the picture. Most dogs would probably go behind his back saying, where's the food going? I want to follow it. But Pongo did really good. Okay, we're going to try that again. Ready? So ask Pongo to sit. 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 Okay, so that help out with the food. Take the food out and get him to sit. Good. Sit. Sit. And then step forward. And feet. Okay, we're going to do this again. Okay? So after one feet, tell him to sit again. And step back. Sit. And step forward. Good. Now, he did really good. Do you know why? Which one? The dog? He did, the hand work, sorry. <laughs> well, they both did good. Because he didn't take one step. You see both feet move? You didn't even notice, did you? <laughs> For some reason, you walking people. It's always a natural habit to do that. I don't know why. I think you're laughing. You know why? Because I don't walk. And I can watch you guys do it. Okay. So he did really good. So what he would want to do is the point where he's at, he would want to do the one or two steps a couple times and then free the dog. So the point comes up, how much do we push it? Well, Pablo here, I almost guarantee by the, end of the, by the end of a little session, he could probably run around his dog and do really well because dog does really well sitting. With this dog here, this dog here is going to be a little bit different. So now we're going to show you the other side of the coin. Yeah, really cool. Okay, now I know I told you. Don't go back. You didn't really oh, okay. Like, oh, Sorry. Okay. Stop for a second. So I know I told usually tell you to really engage with your dog, right? Some dogs need it. This dog does not need any more energy. So you cheated. You just had your dog sit ten feet back. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to try to get this dog to sit a little bit closer to her. And then we're going to start with the one step then, okay? Okay, yeah, wait. Okay, why are you holding that position? Step forward. So she did really good, but she held the she held the foot back for too long. If she's able to move her foot back just a little bit, that's good. That's good. Okay, okay. So watch this. Half a step this time, and so sit. 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 What am I supposed to do with that? Okay. So. <laughs> This is the dog being stressed. The dog is saying, I want to do something for you, Mom. I'm not sure what you're asking because this is something new. Okay, so I'm going to start throwing you things and hope I can get a reward. Sit. Okay. Sit. Okay, so. Sit. 
Right. Because you taught them to do that. Or somebody's taught them to do that. Uh, when she, do you see what happens with her body when she told the dog to sit? And she just did it again. Any idea what she just did? I don't know how to do Come on, you get a special, special brownie point to see it. Yes, Emily. She walked. Exactly. She oh, basically. I'm trying to get closer to her. She basically was. Watch out. She basically, with her body, told the dog. Okay, stop for a second. I want you to feed him. Keep feeding. Put him in front of you. Three seconds. Every zip race. I promise we're going to do this as a group. No. Slightly. Right? Yeah. Right? Leave it? Yes. Good. Okay. So do you notice you kind of have to, you kind of have to have a sit before you kind of get to this point? He does have a sit, but she's not using her body now, and so the dog doesn't know what to do. This is a product of body language that has really affected this dog's sit because now he doesn't quite understand, Mom, what are you asking me to do? Your body's not moving, so I don't know how to sit. I tell you what, I can help you afterwards. Okay. So we can move on, okay? No, that's really my case. Alright, um, can I use you to I'm going to show you another little quick example, then we'll do this everybody together. I promise. Okay, so you guys talk about sit. Sit. So you sit. So you sit. Okay. So, can I pick on you for a minute? Step forward. Okay. He told his dog to sit three times. Finally, his dog sat, right? The reason why Zeus is not sitting so much is because you're probably asking him to sit too much without your work. So you remember, sit puppy, you have to reward a lot. So do a little engagement. I want you to lift the food. I want you guys to do a sit. Uh, so you sit. Good uh, feet. Good. So you feed the dog for initial sit. Okay. Then he takes one slow step and says sit. Sit. Step forward. And feet. Oh. Excellent. Good job. Again. Sit. With the food. Slow step back and sit. Sit. Step forward and feed. Oh boy. No good boy. No good boy. I'll tell you why in a minute. Step again. Should I have to clear it out? You're fine. You're actually doing really good. Good. Nope. Put back in a sit. 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 I 
reinforcing the sick man. We're teaching God that even though our body language is moving back, even though our body is moving back, they need to stay in that position. Are you sure? You have this like, fear in the head like you know, Normally most people do stay. Okay? You don't say stay. Basically, the dog is going to be it. Pretty soon you won't have to remind him to sit. But in the beginning stages, he's got he's to learn that even though your body's moving, he needs to stay there. So that's why I treat him to sit. And I start freaking circles and I keep saying sit. Sometimes it depends. If, let's say right now you can go to Indonesia, walk back to him, and he's fine. Then you don't need to tell him to sit every time. But let's say now you're going to throw something different to him. You're going to walk almost around him. Okay? And most likely he's going to get up, so we're going to remind him to sit again. Okay, and then. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Trying to do it so she's facing this way and never gets dog. Yeah. It's it. She's leave it. So, sit, sit, and I'm just going to sit the staring at the dog. So, you can't actually look at it, but you see that it's Yeah. And well, I realized he was sitting back so far, I was like, well, my step forward. I mean, I can't remember. So, the reach a little bit. Do it and sit on Back and forth, 
Now we have to apply it to something right. So I'm kind of compare it to kind of like a clock. So if Andrea is at 12 degrees, Andrea's at 6 o'clock. When I start to do this, I'm going to go to 5 o'clock. And then I'm going to come back to 6 o'clock. And I'm going to come back and feed. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to 7 o'clock. Or go to 7 o'clock. Then come back to 6 o'clock. And then feed. I'll maybe do that a couple times. And then I'll go to 5, uh, 4.30. Oh, wait, no. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I need to go to 4.30 or 4, depending on how well my dog's doing. This is all based on how well your dog is doing. I can't tell you that once you go to 5 o'clock, you go right to 3. Some dogs will be okay with going this, this far. Some dogs may only be okay with going this far. But the key is to be able to return back to 6 o'clock and go back and feed the dog. Yeah. Okay? One thing that'll help you with this is if you guys have a blanket or a um, a porch or a ledge or anything that can represent the animal's location. In other words, let's say let's say I have a porch and I'm doing this and I, I want to work on the state of the porch. If Anna's on the edge of the porch, it's gonna be hard for her to come forward, right? Or she'll step off the porch. So this is kind of a going back and forth. If you're working on going around the dog and you have a piece of carpet you can use, use that. Anything to kind of help the dog with like a physical location. They learn, wait a minute, stepping off the carpet didn't get any success. I should stay here. And it kind of gives them also a visual. The size of like basically that they can't Yeah, you don't want it too big. Yeah, and they can be a little bit bigger. But it just kind of helps them, gives them a visual. Okay, I stay on this. And then once you get to stay on that, then you can go on to, you know, yeah. But you don't need to do that. It's just another tool to kind of add to your back. Okay, so at what point do we do the down? The down and the sit are really the same in the dog's mind when it comes to stay. So you should mix it up a little bit. So let's say Andrew is good with sitting and I do this back and forth. Okay, I'll do, I'll do down and do this a couple times. And then I'll do sit and I'll do this a little bit. And then I'll do down and I'll mix it up so the dog understands it doesn't matter if I'm doing a sit or down. It's still all about the handler moving away and the dog staying. However, there is a trick to the down that's going to help you a little bit. Let's say Andrew is in a down, right? Andrea knows that all the good stuff comes from my hand. So, when Andrea downs, I can take a couple pieces of food and I can drop it between the front legs. The reason being is, I want the dog to associate the ground with the down this time. In other words, I want the dog to understand that even while I'm moving away, Mom's going to walk up and drop food between my front feet. But what happens if Andrea gets up and comes to me in the down? There's no success, right? Because I wasn't able to walk up and drop food between the front feet. This is also going to help you to teach your dog down from a distance. Let's say this dog here knows down really well and lumps maybe between the front feet. She'll be able to tell the dog down from anywhere, and the dog will say, "Okay, I can down over there because mom can run up and drop some food between my front feet." Where in the sit, we're handing the dog a food. Where the dog on the down. Understand that we're going to go up and feed the dog to the front feet. Does that make sense? Yes. Make sense? Okay. Any questions on the down? Okay, so now we can start thinking once you get where the dog is good with you walking around the dog, and there's okay with it. Sorry, Andrea, you're doing a really great job. I was before you. Okay, so if you go around this way, okay. And she's staying really good, and I can reward her. Well, now what are some things that we can do to start thinking outside the box? Remember, thinking outside the box is teach the dog that it doesn't matter what situation you're in, you still stay. Any ideas? I can start changing my pace. Because when I first started, I was kind of going slow, right? Well, now I can kind of jog around her. Okay, she's okay with that. So this applies to real world situations. Let's say you put your dog in a down at the park and a jogger goes by. 
What's your dog going to do? Oh, I'm used to that. Mom does that with me all the time. I can stay there. Okay. You thought outside the box there. Now let's say you're doing really good on the down. You have you can have somebody with a dog dog by. Dog goes by. I the dog stays. Dog gets a reward. Then when you're in a park and a dog runs by, what's your dog going to do? Oh, I know the state and mom's going to give me a big reward. So the more that you get outside the box and teach your dog to overcome things and to stay, the better your dog's going to stay. Make sense? Okay. Another trick you can do to this is resistance training. Let's say I have Andrea here on leash. Andrea's doing really good on everything I can throw at her. Dog knows that. Andrew knows that. I say no matter what, I'm going to get this big reward. Well, then I can use a little bit of a leash pressure. With Andrew on a leash, I can try to pull a little bit on Andrew and kind of pull her out of the situation. Let's say I pull a little bit and Andrew stays there. Well, then I go and I give Andrew this big reward. Okay, then I try that again. A little pull again. Andrew stays, she gets a big reward. Now Andrew is realizing that the more I try to force her out of the down, the higher the reward is going to be, right? So let's say you're working on the down with your dog, and you accidentally kick the leash. You actually trip on the leash. Well, the dog will know, just because there's pressure on the leash, that doesn't mean I follow it and get up. Does this help? With a dog that really understands its concept, you should be able to drive it across this floor. I've seen this done with dogs before, where they understand the concept of staying so well that you can, on a slick floor, you can pull them across the floor because the dog says, hey, I really want to stay in this situation. I really want to fight this situation. Of course, you may not all get to that point where you can do that, but I'm giving you ideas to kind of think outside the box, to kind of really push to stay with your dog, because remember, it's, it's all good and everything and you're inside the house. When obedience works really good inside your living room, but I want you guys to be able to take your dogs into everywhere and have them stay. Up.